I guess I'm noted for having my head in the clouds. Uh, my research areas are primarily, in one way or another, dealing with clouds. Um, on, uh, some part of my work is dealing with severe convective storms. Uh, I have a student right now, for example, who is doing simulations of tornado formation and convective storms and that. Another that's uh, looking at uh, uh, complexes of thunderstorms, which we call mesoscale convective clusters or complexes. And um, the, these, uh, and he's doing diagnostics studies of the, uh, from observed data of these systems, trying to develop techniques for forecasting the different types of mesoscale convective systems that form in that. You know, I've had students working on the effects of hail um, and uh, flash floods, uh, as well as uh, uh, trying to understand these, the formation and behavior of these large mesoscale systems that are you know, often form up here in the mountains and then move out in the plains and then organize into the large systems that propagate sometimes all the way to the east coast. And that. So that's been a, ma a major area. Uh, the other has been uh, looking at um, front clouds from the climate point of view, and that is how clouds affect climate. And particularly, my research has uh, evolved to looking at the effects of aerosol on cloud properties and that. Uh, one of the uh, things that could influence climate as well on a regional scale as well as global scale. So we're looking at the effects of aerosol that affect the number of cloud droplets in clouds, which affects the brightness and reflectivity of clouds and, and that, and also affects the ability of clouds to produce precipitation. And we're looking at the effects of ice nuclei uh, which then affects uh, the number of ice crystals that form in clouds and uh, affects uh, the properties of clouds as well. Uh, the work in relationship with a major professor like myself is in a, in a kind of a mentorship kind of a role where, you know, the first, the, the student has virtually no background in training and, at, and begins to learn the basic skills, sometimes working with my senior graduate students and that. And eventually, they basically become mature enough where they can start calling the shots and bringing their own ideas into the development of, of a model or, or some observations or whatever. Our department overall is very, very strong in a variety of different areas. And in fact, one of the things when we're recruiting students, we point out is that you know it's not a very narrow, it's not a narrow program where you only learn some one aspect. You don't learn just about clouds and storms. Uh, you can learn about mesoscale meteorology. You can learn about synoptic scale meteorology. You can learn about clouds and climate. You can learn about uh, CO2 and climate. You can learn about hurricanes, and and so this is a very comprehensive program, and it's very very technical. So. A student come in should be prepared in a very strong back background in math and physics and that. And when they leave here, they have that that uh, math and physics background enhanced through the course uh, program and the research here. And plus they've had exposure in the courses to a lot of variety of areas so that they have, a, a, I think, a very good job prospects.